Hi, Michael here, back with the third installment on the League of Dungeoneers tutorials. For those of you who have watched the previous two episodes, you know that we have created our characters, we've been to the first settlement, gotten our first quest, and even made the overland travel to the quest site. In this episode we will look at the basic dungeon setup and we will also look at how to use the scenario sheet. First of all we need to locate the quest. Oh, in this case we were going to play the lost prayer. The information we are looking for are the number of tiles, the special rules, and the threat level setup. If we start with the special rules, it says that once you enter the objective room, you should roll a d3 to determine which paragraph to read. Read only that paragraph. Now the quests are divided with these kind of lines, so you should never read more than up to the line. Once you enter the objective room, you can then go ahead and read the next paragraph. But in this case, we need to roll a d3 to see which paragraph to read. So we could read either this one, number one, number two and number three. That means that this quest has three different endings. Now the number of tiles says seven corridors and seven rooms. So we need this information to set up our exploration deck. And the exploration deck consists of a number of cards with a C, which means corridor, and a number of cards with an R, which means room. So what we need to do is we need to separate these into a pile of corridors and a pile of rooms. And then we have a, the objective room card and we also have two side quest cards. I will put aside the side quest cards for now. There are also a number of uh, cards with a B at the end. Now this is, this is a special set of cards and this should only be used when mentioned in the, quest, in the quest book. There are also special cards for the ancient land expansions and those should be used when you are questing in the ancient lands. Right, so we need seven corridors. So we'll mix this one up. And we'll take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven corridors. And we need seven rooms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we'll mix these together. So, and then we divide it in half. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, this is the first part of the dungeon, and this is the second part. We take the objective room and we place it in the second part. And we give it a good shuffle, like so. And those of you who have played the original Warhammer Quest, you will recognize this. This is nothing new. And then you take the second half, you put it in the bottom like so and then you have your exploration deck ready to go questing so what we're looking for when questing is of course the objective room card then we had a table for the encounters so let's roll to see what we encounter six In a d3 that's undead all right so we will be facing the undead and then we have the threat level. And in this case, it's not a fixed number, but rather a D6. So the starting threat level will be four, which also in this case will be the minimum threat level of the quest. Now, this is where the scenario sheet comes in handy. The scenario sheet has sections for each hero up to four heroes you have a section for party morale and one for threat level and you also have some uh, 
quick reminders on how things work. So in this case, we had a minimum threat level of four. So I normally set, put a, a line like this and a maximum threat level of 20. So we know the threat level can then go between four and 20. Then we need to add our heroes. So we'll start with Bolgrim. He was our Dwarven warrior priest. Then we have Ribius. He was our wizard. And then we had Galathor, the elven rogue. And finally we have Milray, the alchemist. Now let's start filling in some details. So we'll start by calculating the party morale. And this is done by truncating or dividing the resolve for each character by 10 and then truncating the result. So in this case, Galathor, he has a resolve of 40 divided by 10, 10 that's four. So he provides four points to the party morale. And then we have Ribius, he's got 38 resolve. That means he will divide it by 10, that's 3.8, and then truncated, so it's three. So he provides three points. So now we have seven points. And then we have Bolgrim the Dwarf, he will provide four points. So seven plus four, that's 11. However, he was bad tempered, so he will subtract two points from the party morale. So he will actually, he will only provide two points. So we now have nine points. And then we have Milray providing three points. So we've got a party morale of 12. Now you could either use a pen to mark this, or you can use these cubes that has been provided with the game. So you can just simply move them around. There is also a laminated version of this provided with the game where you can use dry eraser markers to just note this down as well. So it's completely reusable. Then we had a starting threat level of four. And let's go through the equipment. Bolgrim the Dwarf is armed with a battle hammer uh, and that's the only weapon he's got. And no torch, so nothing special for him apart from the dodge token. Now you can place a dodge token here and every time you use this one in a battle you can remove it to simply to see uh, if your hero has dodged or not. Next up we have Ribius. Now he's got a staff and a torch. So let's give him the torch. And dodge token. Then we have Galathor, also armed with a rapier and a torch, like so, and dodge token for you as well. And Milray, armed with a short sword and no, no torch. Now there is a spot here for weapon. And the idea with that one is that you can use a double-sided token, which is melee weapon on one side and a ranged weapon on the other side. So if Milra here would have a short sword and a sling, for instance, she would have to equip one of those. So then we could say, currently she's equipped with a sling by marking with the ranged. And then if she chooses to switch weapon, you simply do like this and you know she's now armed with her short sword. But in this case, we don't have any ranged weapon with us, so we won't use that. Um, we would also mark the hit points. And in Milray's case, she's got a maximum hit point of 10. So I just put a ring around that one and add one of these cubes. We've got Bolgrim, who's got uh, 
10 points as well. Ribius has got 12 points. And last but not least, we've got Galathor, who's got 10 points as well. Then we have energy, and the only one who will benefit from using energy at this point is Bolgrim, because he's the warrior priest and they use energy for their prayers. And he's got one point of energy. And then you could place the sanity cubes, but I tend to start using them once uh, the sanity drops down. So you can just move them around like here. So that one is done. Then it's time to set up the dungeon. And setting up the dungeon is pretty simple. You just take the start tile, like so. You take a door. And you take your four characters and decide your marching order. In this case, I say I go for the wizard in the back. And let's place the warrior priest in front. Together with the rogue, I think. And then Milray at the end. And then we take the exploration cards and we place them here. And at this point, we are ready to start playing. And now once you open the door to explore the dungeon, you simply flip the topmost card. And in this case, revealing a monster den. And then you can use the number in the top left corner to identify the tile that you need. And you should also read this one saying that there should be two doors in this room. So you locate the tile. You can place it any way you see fit, just to make room on the table. And you remove the closed door and replace it with an open door. And it said two doors. So we place a second door somewhere where we see fit, maybe there. The mechanics behind opening the doors will be handled in a separate tutorial. Now once you've done this, you place the remaining cards behind the next door and you read the instruction regarding the room. In some cases, it might say three or even four doors. So let's pretend it said three doors and we'll place a third door in the room. Then we need to divide the pile of cards. And this is done by dealing from the bottom. And now we suddenly have two piles of cards instead. In some cases, you might find rooms that have only one door. That means the door that you came through. But you still have some cards left. In that case, you take the remaining cards and you place them at the bottom of another pile. If there are several piles, you divide them between the piles. If this would have been the only pile and you end up in a dead end like this, then you're allowed to place a hidden door in any room that you see fit. In some cases, you might also end up in a room that has more doors than you have cards left. In that case, you ignore those doors. They are simply not there. And at some point, you will locate the objective room. And this is what you are looking for. And once you do this, you go back to the quest book and you read the narrative paragraph and then the setup section. There is also an aftermath that you read once you have completed or killed all the monsters in the objective room. In the next tutorial we will go into the details, what you can do once you're in the dungeon when it comes to actions. As you move along in the dungeon you will of course run into monsters and the doors won't be as easy to open. And that will be all for now. Keep your eyes peeled for the next tutorial. Bye bye. <laughs>